Welcome to Electra Online. By request of our viewers, we're going to continue working on the Lagrangian playlist. And with the Lagrangian, I do realize you need to see a lot of different examples before you kind of get a good feel for how to solve problems using that Lagrangian technique. Essentially what we're doing here is saying that the Lagrangian is equal to the difference between the kinetic and potential energy. Now they use T and V for kinetic and potential energy, but I like to write Ke and P to make it a little bit more clear. So we find the difference between the kinetic and potential energy, then we take the partial derivative of that with respect to x dot, which is essentially the velocity, and then we take the time derivative of that and we subtract from that the, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x or whatever the, the uh, variable is that we use. We typically use uh, what we call, hmm, not necessarily x, y, and z variables, but we use variables that represent distance, but we don't always use x, y, and z. All right, so what we have here, next example, is a rolling disc. So the rolling disc has a certain amount of moment of inertia, and therefore we'll have two different kinds of kinetic energy when we pull it. It'll have the translational kinetic energy, and it'll have the rotational kinetic energy. So what we need to do is find all the kinetic energies and all the potential energies of this particular system. So we can say that the kinetic energy of this system, once we start pulling in it and it goes into motion, that will be equal to one half mv squared plus one half i omega squared. So this is for the translational kinetic energy and that's for the rotational kinetic energy. Instead of writing v, we can write x dot. So this is equal to one half m x dot squared plus one half the moment of inertia of a solid disk is one half, the mass times the radius squared. We're assuming that we're given the radius and the mass. And omega can be written as v over r, so it becomes v squared over r squared. And now right away you realize that the r squares cancel. And instead of writing v, we can write, we can write x dot. So we end up with one half mx dot squared plus a half times a half, which is a quarter m x dot squared and we combine the two we get three quarters m x dot squared so that is the kinetic energy of the system once it's in motion then we have to take the oh now we're not ready yet here so we'll just leave it at that the next thing we're going to do is find the potential energy now the potential energy comes from gaining height and since we're rolling on a flat surface there's no height being gained and it could also contain a spring that is contracted or elongated. We don't have one of those. So it turns out in this case, the potential energy is simply equal to zero, which means that the Lagrangian, which is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy will now be equal to three quarters m x dot squared minus zero or simply three quarters m x dot squared. Now we're ready to take the partial derivative with respect to x dot. So the partial derivative of L with respect to x dot is equal to, so we take the two to the front, we get six over four, six over four m x dot to the first power, which of course simplifies to uh, three halves m x dot, like this. And then we're going to take the time derivative with respect to time, so the ddt, of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot, which is essentially the ddt of this quantity right here, this gives, this gives us 3 halves m x double dot. So instead of velocity, we now have acceleration. And then we're going to take the derivative, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x, but notice that is taking the partial derivative of this with respect to x, there's no x variable, so therefore that is equal to zero. And so then the equation here, becomes the first part, which is 3 over 2 mx double dot minus the second part, which is 0, equal 0, or 3 halves mx double dot is equal to 0. And of course, if you then replace x double dot by a, you can write 3 over 2 ma equal 0. Now that's the equation of motion that we get from this example. Now, that's of course assuming we're not applying a force. That means 
This is when the force is equal to zero. And so that would simply be the equation of motion of that system. And notice that you will not have an acceleration, because acceleration equals zero, since m is a constant, when there's no force. Now, you could say, when we apply a force, we could write it as 3 over 2 ma equals f. So then you can say that f will be equal to 3 halves ma if we pull on that system with a force f. And that would, of course, be the case where f is not equal to zero. And that is how we find the solution using the Lagrangian.